Hyundai have only been building performance cars for about half a decade now. They started out with the i30N, which was an absolute cracker of a car. They backed it up with the pint-sized i20N, which was equally as good. We're now here with the Kona N. Is it a high-riding SUV or a performance hatch? Who cares? That's all semantics. Let's get behind the wheel and see if it's any good. The Hyundai Kona N starts from $47,500 before on-roads. Standard features include a 10.25 inch infotainment system with a full suite of track apps and telemetry, eight speaker Harman Kardon stereo and sports seats. Our test car, however, was the Hyundai Kona N Premium that starts from $50,500 before on-roads. For the extra cash, you receive Alcantara seats that are also heated and ventilated, a sunroof, heads-up display, and front parking sensors to complement the rear ones. One of the first questions you're gonna ask is, what's the difference between this car and an i30N? Well, we'll start with what's the same. Under the bonnet, there's the usual two-liter turbocharged four-cylinder with 206 kilowatts of power. There's also the same three-stage adaptive dampers too. Where this car differs, however, is in terms of its suspension stroke, or the length. There's more of it here, meaning it should be more comfortable on the day-to-day. -day. The wheelbase too is a little bit shorter, whether that makes a difference or not, we'll find out soon. I know this is a performance car, but it's also an SUV, meaning boot space matters. There's 361 litres on offer here, which is less than you get with an i30N, which is a bit of a disappointment. However, thankfully, they have included a space-saving spare wheel under the boot floor. If you're a keen driver, the inside of this car is just as exciting as the outside. First is this manual handbrake, which is a nice touch. Second is this great steering wheel with these two blue end buttons. Now what they do is up to you. You can have them set up as a regular N mode, or you can have them set up as a custom mode, where you've got two different levels of diff, three different levels of suspension, three different levels of engine calibration. The amount of configuration in this car is pretty insane. And it's almost like someone from BMW's been here. Funny that. Something else I like too is this N grin shift mode. Now if you press this button, you get a 20 second counter on a dash and it gives you more power and more performance. It's a bit of a gimmick, sure, but it's a lot of fun. And that's what this car is about, having fun. In terms of the rest of the cabin, it's very mainstream high-end Hyundai. Ventilated and heated seats, heated steering wheel, a great digital instrument cluster in front of you, and a good infotainment system too. If you wish to use this car on it every day, it's got plenty of gear to keep you happy. The biggest downfall with the Hyundai Kona N is here in the second row. I'm 183 centimeters tall, and this is my sitting position. And as you can see, my knees are hard up against the seat backs. If you've got children, this may not be a problem, but I will say there is more room in the Hyundai i30N than there is in the Hyundai Kona N. In terms of other amenities, there are no air vents, but that's because of the manual handbrake. Beggars can't be choosers. There's a USB port and a couple of cup holders too, for good measure. Powering the Hyundai Kona N is a 2-litre turbocharged 4-cylinder engine that produces 206 kilowatts flat from 5500 to 6000 RPM and 392 Newton meters between 2100 and 4700 RPM. Unlike the Hyundai i30N performance hatchback, the only transmission offered in the performance SUV is an in-house 8-speed dual-clutch automatic. It does feel a bit strange to be rolling out of a pit lane in a performance SUV, but here we are on the track at Wakefield Park in the Hyundai Kona N. What you do notice about this car straight off the bat is how noisy it is. The exhaust is quite loud. On the downshift, you get some pops and cracks. The steering is well weighted. It's definitely a performance car underneath. Lean on the throttle, third gear, the acceleration is strong. Coming up to this apex, hard on the brakes into third gear, just tip it through. It's a nice car to drive. It definitely speaks to the keen driver. If you're interested in a bit of motorsport, ironically, you can get away with it in this SUV. Bit of a niche that, but there you go. Other things that strike me as very surprising is just the depth of ability. There's a lot of grip in this car and you can go genuinely fast. Over the back straight here, it's very easy to get caught up. 
and bro try to brake a bit late and almost end up in the weeds because you don't realize how quick you're going. You don't expect this car to be fast, but it's just rapid overall. Something else I like about it too, which I'm probably not gonna demonstrate here whilst I'm speaking is in the ESC sport mode, it's not completely off, but it gives you some movement. So if you trail brake into the apex or you're a bit late, lift off the brake, the car will pivot and move and you'll get some, some dancing from the back axle, which again, the traction control is not completely off, so you're not gonna end up doing a loop, but it just gives you that freedom to have fun, which is what this car's all about. We sampled the Gente Kona in on public roads the week before driving on the track. Out in the open, it feels fairly well mannered despite being a performance car. The ride can be busy at times and the cabin loud, but that's as bad as it gets. Considering the well of performance on offer, the Hyundai Kona N is surprisingly livable on the day-to-day -day grind. If you're a family with attitude, you'll absolutely love the Hyundai Kona N. More importantly, however, it's not a wallflower. Underneath all of those red badges, red stripes, big wings and all that nonsense is a great car with heaps of depth. If you want to put your partner in something from the nine to five and get out on the weekend and have a punt, this is the car for you. However, the bigger challenge is, do you pick it or an i30N? I'll leave you with something. It's always good to be a bit different. If you want to see more on-track action with us here at Drive, make sure you like and subscribe to our channel.